Sniffing their way into Minecraft 1.20's brand new sniffer mob can be difficult to find and farm new ancient flowers from. However, no worries, because in this sniffer guide, I'll explain it all. So the most important thing to know about the sniffer is how do you find it? Well, it actually requires a bit of help from the brand new archaeology system. Simply craft a brush with a stick, a copper ingot, and a feather, as well as that you're going to want to get into a boat and start exploring warm ocean biomes. We can have the warm ocean ruins spawn in the game. To actually explore these, I would suggest bringing with you a sword, a shield, as well as a potion of water breathing and a potion of night vision. The potion of night vision will help you look all the way across the ocean surface and try and find these structures that tend to camouflage themselves very well. The good news is, is they're actually very, very common. And there's a bunch of different ways these can generate, but basically there is the small structure and there is the large structure. I've found that although it seems counterintuitive, you actually tend to find more of the suspicious sand in the small structures. Sometimes the small structures will generate completely on their own, isolated from all other ocean ruins, and sometimes you have a large group of them. But something really important to know is, well, what we're looking at right now, there is a ton of drowned. And so fighting this mob that's actually been newly animated in Java Edition, you want to have with you a shield to go against tridents, and as well as that a diamond sword or just some other basic weapon to get rid of all these annoying undead mobs. What we're looking for is suspicious sand. And again, this is only in the warm ocean ruins, not any other structure. You basically just want to right click on the suspicious sand, which looks similar to standard sand, but the texture is a little bit different. So this is standard sand, this is suspicious sand. And there's a bunch of different things you can get in here, like pottery shards, a bunch of items very similar to what you'd find in, let's say, the chests around here. But the one thing that we're looking for, of course, is the sniffer egg. Now, what's actually the chance of finding the sniffer egg in the suspicious sand around these structures? So basically, it's about 6.7%. So ideally, 6.7% of the suspicious sand here will give you the sniffer eggs. And if you want to get yourself a renewable source of sniffers, you're going to need two sniffer eggs, of course, so you can eventually breed them. So it will take a lot of excavating to initially get yourself a source of sniffers. The good news is, though, is eventually you can farm more eggs from the sniffers themselves. So you really only need to go on one big excavation journey to go through here trying to find those sniffer eggs. And after a ton of digging, we have got ourselves the sniffer egg. Now we have one sniffer egg, we're going to have to keep going until we find a second one. A trick you can even do to make this slightly quicker, although I wouldn't necessarily suggest it, is when you find a suspicious sand to just briefly brush it until you see the top of that item there. And once you see that it's not a sniffer egg, just go on to the next suspicious sand. Also, one very interesting thing is that there is a pottery shard you can find in the structure that is called the Snort Pottery Shard, and the pattern on it is actually that of the sniffer. Anyway, we found ourselves a second egg, although I'm not sure where it's floated off to. There it is. So it's always good to be careful to look out for the items that you've found. Now that we have two sniffer eggs, we never have to go archaeology digging inside of the warm ocean ruins again, and we can start hatching this ancient mob. The ancient and mysterious sniffer egg is hatched fastest on moss. I actually have no idea why this is, because you can place sniffer eggs on top of any block. You can even have them in the air if you want. Another important thing to know is you do not need silk touch. You can break these with your fist and put them back down. So you can place it anywhere and it hatches in 20 minutes. But as I was saying earlier, it does hatch quickest on moss, which makes it hatch in only 10 minutes. There's no requirement other than there just being moss below the block. You'll notice that the sniffer egg itself is an incredibly large block. And if we place two sniffer eggs on top of each other, they do fully touch each other, making sort of a pillar-like shape. Now, I think it's a very interesting question as to why the sniffer egg is quickest on moss. And I honestly think the answer is actually really interesting and full of lore. It's the fact that the only place that moss is found naturally in Minecraft, in large amounts anyway, is inside of the lush caves. And so I think the idea would be is that maybe the lush caves are a biome that actually used to be in the overworld, but now they can only survive the strange climate of certain caves. And so perhaps the sniffers used to be the occupants of this surface lush cave biome, but today all that remains is the fact that they are still more used to the moss, so they will grow up faster on it. So as this egg hatches in the 10 minutes on moss or 20 minutes on any other block, it goes through cracking stages. There is the first stage of cracking where we see some cracks across it, and then there is the second stage where there are much larger, more visible cracks across the surface of the sniffer egg. And finally, with a bunch of particles going everywhere, that sniffer egg will break, and on the ground, we will have appear the incredibly adorable baby sniffer. And you can see the baby sniffer is already going around and sniffing. This mob 
is so adorable. But let's take this sniffer out of this damp old cave and up to the overworld, but it's not actually called that, it's called the Snifflet. Now the Snifflet, which I think is an amazing name for this mob, will basically walk around the world trying to sniff out for things, but it's too young to actually sniff out any ancient seeds or plants for us, and so because of that it'll just kind of walk around the world with its adorable square body. The Snifflets grow up in 20 minutes. Now you can accelerate this process by feeding them torch flower seeds, but I would absolutely not recommend doing this because this item is very very hard to get. The Snifflet cannot get into boats even as a baby, however you can attach them to leads and move them around with leads, but because they're quite small they do look kind of glitchy when you're pulling them around as you can see because their legs go very fast and their nose goes up and down. It is actually incredibly adorable to see these sniffers being pulled around with their feet going really quickly. Probably a bug to be honest, but I'm kind of hoping Mojang keeps that one in, because I cannot think of anything funnier than those sniffers' legs going incredibly quickly and their nose shaking so much. Also, I would definitely not recommend hurting your sniffers, as they're incredibly rare mobs and also just quite friendly, but the sniffer does have 7 hearts of health, which is not very much, so be aware that if they take a decent amount of damage, they can die incredibly quickly. There is quite a size difference between the baby snifflet and the adult sniffer as you can see. In fact, the adult sniffer is actually taller than the player. In fact, I believe it's just over two blocks tall. If you want to get more sniffers once they've grown up, we have to use the torch flower seeds, which is the same item that's the sniffer's food that makes them grow up quicker. Now, how do you actually get the torch flower seeds? Well, the sniffers get them for themselves, which is kind of convenient, but also kind of not, because this item is very difficult to get large amounts of, even with a large sniffer farm. But either way, if we feed two sniffers the torch flower seeds, which you notice they actually do not follow us if we're holding them, those two sniffers will breed, but instead of having a snifflet appear on the ground, something different happens. Actually, we just have an item appear on the ground, and that is of course the sniffer egg. That's how we get the snifflets that go into the sniffers and get more and more of these. However, getting a large number of sniffer eggs is incredibly difficult, and this item is worth a ton, because getting those torch flower seeds is so hard. You might be wondering, how could it be difficult to get torch flower seeds if the sniffers are just sniffing them up all the time? Well, that's where we get into the main function of the sniffer. Before we do that, one last fact about the sniffer, although again I would never recommend it if you do end up killing an adult sniffer, 10% of them will drop moss upon death. However, they do not have the chance of dropping anything out, so it really is not worthwhile to hurt these mobs, but it does show us this similarity between them and plants, and I'm assuming the sniffer moss is maybe that green stuff on their back. So there is a sniffer moss, but I really not suggest getting this item from this difficult to get mob. But anyway, as I was saying earlier, why is it so difficult to get the torch flower seeds? Well, this is where we're getting into the sniffer's sniffing ability. Every 8 minutes, the sniffer goes around on the ground, sniffing out for a place to go down and get ourselves seeds. You can see it doing it right here. It basically sticks its nose into the ground, finds a place, and goes down on all 6 legs, then digs its nose into the ground and roots up either a torch flower seed or a pitcher pod. One of these two items, a 50-50 chance between them. And as you can see, the sniffers walk around a lot, and they're large mobs, so you have to be very careful to go around here, maybe have them in a decently large large fence. I'll go into a little later how to more efficiently farm these items from the sniffers, but you can see no matter what we do, with the sniffers only performing this action every 8 minutes, with one sniffer you're only getting a torch flower seed every 16 minutes on average, or about half an hour to get yourself enough torch flower seeds to breed two sniffers. Now it naturally makes sense that this ancient mob could not use its massive nose to sniff up the torch flower or pitcher pod seeds from just any block, they have to be certain types. So what type of blocks can the gigantic dinosaur-like sniffer mob sniff up these from? I have just laid out every single space where the sniffer can sniff out its torch flower and pitcher pod seeds. It has to be at minimum a 6x6 area of one of these blocks, so obviously the sniffers down there are doing it on a 6x6 of grass, but it can also be a 6x6 or larger of coarse dirt, muddy mangrove roots, as well as a rooted dirt, podzol, mud, moss, or just standard dirt. Interestingly, enough, these are also all the exact same blocks that saplings can be planted on, including the mud and muddy mangrove roots. So if you ever want to test a block to see if the sniffer can sniff out ancient seeds on it, of course being pitcher and torch flower seeds, just see if you can plant a sapling on it, and if you can, the sniffer can also get your seeds from it. Also, although moss is better for having the sniffer eggs be hatched on, there is actually no quicker block that the sniffers sniff up the seeds.
shades on. It is the eight minute cooldown on every single one, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. And unlike turtle eggs, we can jump up and down on top of the sniffer egg, and it will not hurt that sniffer egg at all. So that's the basics of the sniffer, but how do we actually farm this mob? Well, I'm gonna start by showing you an efficient method of farming the sniffers to get these seeds from it, and then what to actually do with the torch flower seeds and the pitcher pods. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can farm the sniffer in Minecraft, but I'm just going to show you the easiest way. What you want to do is fence off an area or even just use blocks and have the fences or blocks be at least too tall. The idea behind this is this will stop skeletons or other mobs from killing you while you're at your farm. As this is a fully AFKable design, that is incredibly easy to set up. So lay out a decently sized perimeter for the farm. Ideally, you don't want it to be too large, but definitely large enough for the sniffers to have a lot of room to go sniffing out seeds. Also on one side of the farm you want to have an entrance, so for example right here I have two fence gates, but you could really use anything you want. And you actually want to make the perimeter of this be at least three blocks tall to make sure that there's no phantoms that get to you, and also that the sniffers can fit in. Now once you do have this being three blocks tall, you want to cover the top of this in upward slabs. This roof will not be able to have mobs spawn on it, and it's also going to stop phantoms from swooping down and killing you. It's super important to fill in the entire roof like this, and it'll also trap the LAs that we're going to use in this farm from flying away by accidently. Now once we've done that, you simply want to put a couple torches inside the farm to make sure that no mobs can spawn inside of it. Then you want to lead two sniffers into the farm, and on one side of the farm replace whatever blocks are there for moss blocks, unless the floor of your farm already was moss blocks. This will give us a space for hatching sniffer eggs. Now you want to find two LAs and bring them into the farm, and give one LA a torch flower seed give the other LA a pitcher pod, and now the farm is basically done. What'll happen is when the sniffers sniff up their pitcher pods and torch flowers, you'll just be AFKing in the farm and your inventory will slowly fill up with these items. And the sniffers may push you around a bit, but basically what'll end up happening is whenever the sniffers will sniff up the pitcher pod or the torch flower, our handy LA's will grab those for us, throw them at us, and over time we're going to eventually have our inventory fill up with those items. Now obviously the more sniffers and inside this farm, the more efficient it'll be. So the idea would be is occasionally when you're AFKing, you're going to want to feed those two sniffers, and the farm of course can be much larger too, that'll get you more things eventually. And then you want to grab the egg from those sniffers breeding, put them on this strip of moss we put down, and just start AFKing again, and eventually that sniffer egg will hatch. Then that snifflet will eventually grow up, go around the farm looking for seeds, sniff them up from us, give them to us, and the cycle is repeated. And so that's how to make it incredibly easy easy sniffer farm. But now on to a really important section of this video, what about the pitcher pod and the torch flower seeds? After all, isn't this entirely what the video is about? What do you actually do once you get these items? What's actually the use of them? Well, let's exit out of our farm, making sure not to let the sniffers or the LAs escape, and let's take a look at these two items. Believe it or not, the pitcher pod and the torch flower seeds are crops. That's right, two brand new crops have been added to Minecraft. In fact, a new crop has not been added to the game since beetroot, so this is a pretty big deal. Now to set up a farm for these to actually grow them, what you want to do is just set up a basic farm field, which is done by placing down a water block, putting four spokes out from it that are four blocks long, then connecting those into a 9x9 square of tilled dirt, which of course you can do with anything like a wooden hoe, diamond hoe, stone hoe, really whatever you want. Once we've done that, we can then place these items down and let them grow. Now, there's multiple ways that we can grow this, and some are are definitely more efficient than others. Although it doesn't matter too much, since the really difficult part of this is actually getting the seeds, you're still going to want to grow these as quickly as possible. So let's start by talking all about how to grow the torch flower. So the torch flower has a sort of interesting look when you first plant it down, a singular green plant, and if we take a look at this as it grows, it only has three stages to it. It's not grown at all stage, the stage where it's somewhat grown, and the stage where it is fully grown. Now once it's fully grown, we can click on it and harvest the torch flower. You notice we do not get a seed back, and so because of that there is not a really easy source of these, you can only get them the slow and tedious way of having them being farmed up by the sniffer. This is not a plant where once you get one of them you can just grow them more, because you do not get more torch flower seeds from this. But anyway, if you break it at its first or second growth stage, you just get those seeds back. And breaking these at any stage with fortune does not affect them at all or how many seeds you get. Now what's the most efficient way of actually growing these? The trick I would suggest is planting them in rows like this, not just filling up your entire field, but having
having a row of torch flower seeds, and then a row of literally anything else. So this could just be something easy like wheat seeds, or it could be the other pitcher pod plant, but by basically going a row of the torch flower crop, then a row of something else, and a row of the torch flower crop, as you can see already, these will actually grow way quicker with this one change. And so if you want to get these vibrantly beautiful torch flowers very quickly, that is the way to do it. What's the actual use of the torch flower? Well, the torch flower seeds, of course, can be used to breed the sniffers as we saw, but in terms of the torch flower, it is purely decorative, except for one crafting recipe use, which is that the torch flower is directly turned into orange dye, but I would never suggest doing this because orange dye is so much easier to get in so many other different ways. The torch flower is such a difficult item to get. Please do not use this recipe under almost any condition, but if you do want to, you can technically turn those beautiful torch flowers directly into that orange dye. For now, there's no other uses, it being mostly decorative, but still an absolutely gorgeous flower, and one that I would say is probably worth the effort if you're trying to have the best garden possible. Now let's uproot these crops and go on to the pitcher pod plant. So as we saw, 50% of the seeds that the sniffer sniffs up are the pitcher pods. And if we plant this down, this is actually a root-based crop, and you can see the root of it right there. This works just like the torch flower and actually every other crop in the sense that by planting it down in rows, we're going to have this grow way quicker. And something really fun you can actually do is have half your field be the pitcher crops and have half your field be the torch flower crops. But of course, any other plant in between there will work. So for example, wheat seeds. Now, unlike the torch flower, the pitcher plant has many more stages to it. It actually has a total of five growth stages. This is the first one. This is the second one. This one right here is the third one, this is the fourth one, and this is the beautiful fifth one. These are all absolutely gorgeous plants. Now one thing important to know is that this root at the bottom of it, once you've harvested this, that root goes away, so you can plant it down again if you want, but it'll never look like that with the root again. And so if you want the pitcher plants to look like that, be sure to not uproot them and keep them like that wherever you planted them down. Perhaps just having random moisturized farmland where you plant these. And of course the question is, what are the uses of the five growth stages? pitcher plant. Well, again, it's also only decorative, but the one use for it that it does technically have is being able to be crafted directly into cyan dye. Now, what I would really love to see is some unique brewing recipes or some other interesting crafting use for these, but for now, we do not have that, and so because of that, we're just going to have to be content with this crafting use. Something really funny about this plant, too, the longer you look at it, is it's a bit of an optical illusion, and I'll show you what I mean by that. If we harvest one of these and put it down, you'll notice that that little tuft of purple on the top of there it is basically pointing to the right. And so if we walk around that, you're going to assume it's eventually going to start pointing a different direction, but it actually doesn't. It goes from having a short side to a long side when we walk around it. You'll notice the pixels are there and they actually just appear in the other position. So it's a very strange texture in that way and kind of fun to look at. But anyway, that is actually everything about the sniffers and its plants, the torch flowers and pitcher pods inside of Minecraft. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to sniff the like button, subscribe to see more content, like this and I will see you in the next video. Turn on notifications to never miss another video, maybe join my discord server link in the description below and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!